Welcome to Yoga Conditioning. This is my first of hopefully many yoga conditioning classes. This is part of uh, my new offering for 2021, new year, so new energy, new uh, ideas, new projects, new hopes. It's always an opportunity to start again. So the goal of yoga conditioning is for those of us who are either beginners or even more seasoned yogis, it's just an opportunity for us to get a little stronger. Stronger in the sense that it's not about bulking up, it's really about being stronger so that we can have a safer and maybe less effortful yoga practice. So this is not a Pilates class, but this is not a full on yoga vinyasa or hatha class basically i will be explaining what we do and the purpose so that when you go to a group class or when you practice yoga at home by yourself you keep these things in mind and know which muscle groups are necessary so i just notice in my own practice and with my own students that a lot of people have more difficulty with upper body those asanas that require more upper body the shoulder the pec in general the biceps etc triceps we tend to go through them very quickly when we do any kind of vinyasa welcome alex hi alex welcome we're just getting started we're just gonna need a towel today so as I was saying, for many of us, we just, when it's challenging for us, we kind of either lose the form and then it's risky for our bodies or we just go through it so quickly because we, we won't avoid it. So hopefully this class is going to bring you that strength so that you can hold Chaturanga for a little longer, so that you can hold Downward Facing Dog for a little longer, all right, and safely. Hello Z, welcome to everyone. All right, so I invite you to come into a cross-legged seat um, with a, the towel or the blanket underneath you. So, as I was saying, this is not exactly a full-on yoga class and it's not a full-on Pilates or fitness class. This is a hybrid to make us stronger so that we can practice yoga, hatha, vinyasa more safely with more strength all right but because it's still part of yoga we still have the mindfulness element of it we still have the breath work element into it so once we find that long spine hips are higher than the knees because we're sitting sitting on that blanket that helps us to lift our spine a little bit more easily so let's all bring our hands onto our knees or thighs noticing the alignment ears shoulders to hips so if you're tilting forward or you're tilting backwards trying to find that length in the spine lengthening the spine while still maintaining the natural curve of the spine Or just breathe, start to tune inward, start to step inside your body. That combination of effort and ease, hopefully this is more ease than effort. Noticing what's going on in our bodies, the body temperature. Notice any tightness. Notice if your mind is just wandering all over the place. Whatever it is, it is. Oh, still, we want to slow down the mind, so let's start tuning into the breath. Noticing the sensations of the air as it goes in through the nose. The nose, the throat, and the chest cavity. Noticing our belly rise and fall. Can you relax your shoulders away from the ears, 
the elbows away from the shoulders while you continue to expand, lengthen your spine, tailbone to crown of the head vertically. Notice if your hips are resisting, can you breathe into your hips so you can relax your knees a little bit more towards the floor. Let's start making our inhales and exhales equally long. So let's inhale through the nose, chest, rib cage, belly expand, top of the breath. Exhale, belly, rib cage, and chest. A few more times like that on your own. Inhale, chest, rib cage, belly, sides, and lower back expand. Exhale, belly, rib cage, and chest. One more time on your own. Noticing the sensation, the information that your body's giving you. Slowly, you're going to start opening your eyes, soft gaze. You can have a soft gaze on the screen, but really try to stay inwards, internal. It's conditioning, but it's still very much part of yoga. So it's about what's going on inside, allowing us to remove blockages, tension, tightness. All right. So we're going to start stretching very gently just because we need to warm up the body before we start conditioning. So let's do some next stretches. We're going to bring the right ear to the right shoulder. Nothing else moves, nothing else changes. It's just ear to shoulder. Our shoulders are still dropping away from the ears. The spine is still long. Just breathe into that space between the base of the neck and the shoulder. Continue to breathe. Equal inhales to exhales. Breathing into our belly, sides, lower back. Slowly roll your chin down, spine stays long. Now feel the stretch in the back of the neck, back of the shoulders. Continue to breathe deeply, relax the belly. And exhale completely, noticing any tightness in the neck and the shoulder area. This is just information the body is giving you so that you can modify your practice accordingly. Now slowly bringing the left ear to left shoulder. Breathe, breathing into that space. Allowing those muscles to slowly relax. This is gentle. We're not pulling. We're not yanking. We're just reading the body. Now we're going to do some half circle chin rolls so start rolling the chin down towards the chest and then the ear towards the other shoulder and back and forth on the breath noticing your range noticing how maybe each side is slightly different welcome dimple feel free to turn on your camera We're just doing some neck half circles and then slowly coming back to neutral back of the neck is long once again we're going to warm up the shoulders so on the inhale start to lift the shoulders towards the ears on the exhale roll the shoulders backwards shoulder blades meet and then a full exhale shoulders away from the ears inhale the shoulders forward top of the inhale shoulders to ears and then start the exhale shoulders go back and then roll all the way down at the bottom of the breath close your eyes just tune inwards as you continue 
to explore the range of your shoulders, noticing if there's tightness, if there's any clicks and pops. We're starting to trigger the synovial fluid in the shoulder joint, shoulder girdle. So go slow with the breath, lubricating our shoulder joints. Your circles can be small or big. This is not a competition against others or even against yourself. One more circle. We're going to be using our shoulders a lot today, so we need to warm them up. Next time you exhale, lowering your shoulders away from the ears, we're going to change directions. On the inhale, this time brings the shoulders back, top of the breath, ears, shoulders to ears, and then exhale, shoulders forward and down. So imagine you're drawing circles with your shoulders. Remember to breathe, moving with the breath. In yoga, we breathe and then the body follows. This is your practice, your pace, your speed. I'm only here to facilitate and guide. You are your own teacher. Few more circles like this, saying hello to your shoulders, your chest, pectoral muscle. Beautiful. Relax the shoulders. We're gonna bring our hands together, clasp those hands, lace those fingers, and we're gonna start making some wrist circles. Again, in this modern day lifestyle, we use our wrists way more than our parents or grandparents did. Those keyboards, smartphones, tablets. So go slowly, Marion, go much more slowly. Go so slowly so that you can really pick up the information from your wrists, telling you what's tight in which direction. So this is part of our Svadhyaya practice, self-study practice. It's one of the precepts of yoga. Let's change the direction of those wrist circles. This seems like a basic thing, but honestly, Stretching our wrists is so important. Those of us that spend some time in front of the keyboards, we all have tight wrists. All right, slowly release that. We're gonna do seated cat and cow. So if you've done my taking the class before, you know where we're going. Otherwise, just bring your hands on your knees. I'm gonna go sideways so that you can see exactly how this looks. On the inhale, we're going to draw the shoulders back, start arching the back, lifting the chin and lifting the tailbone. So this is what we call cow. Top of the breath, belly drops, relax the pelvic floor. On the exhale, reverse, we start to round the back, shoulders forward, lifting the tailbone and pubis up, chin to chest, feel the shoulder blades draw away from each other. On the inhale, coming back to cow, lift the chest, feel the stretch in the throat without crunching your neck. On the exhale, rounding the back into cat. Continue moving like that on your breath, making sure you're expanding the belly completely as you open up the front gate of the body and then pulling the navel towards your abdomen. We're starting to create a little bit of fire. So just bring your awareness to the navel as it expands when you come forward. And then when the abdomen and navel contracts as you round the back into cat. Continue like that on your own, self-study studying the sensation throughout the spine from tailbone and then up all those vertebrae up to the very top of your neck and then crown of the, of the head. A few more times. If you haven't closed your eyes, close them now. And just feel 
allow this movement to be yummy, delicious, stretching the fascia, stretching also the muscles and rejuvenating the discs, the vertebrae, the spinal fluid. As we age, our spines become tighter, the discs become smaller. This very simple exercise prevents those discs from losing all that lubrication or at least slows it down. All right, coming back to neutral, we're going to go for some side stretches. So from here, we're going to lift the arms up slowly on the inhale, palms to touch above the head, high prayer, really activate, engage the shoulders, the armpits, really shoot your fingers as you could touch the ceiling, anchor down the sits bones, and then bring the right hand to the floor besides you, and then go for a side stretch. This is not so much of a hip opener or hip stretch. It's more of a um, the the middle of the the rib cage. Feel the stretch in the rib cage as the lifted arm really actively shoots diagonally away. Breathe into the ribs space between the ribs the neck is long and spacious no crunching of the neck one more breath here on the next inhale rise up high prayer shoot those arms up activate the shoulder blades lifting up and then bring the left hand to the side right arm stretches sideways finding the stretch in the waist and the rib cage the intercostal muscles those are the muscles in between the ribs. We never think we have muscles there, but we do. Breathe. Breathe into the side. Breathe into the length of your spine. Equal inhales to exhales. Really tune inward. On the next inhale, rise up high prayer, palms to the stretch, those arms up, and then exhale, bring the prayer down through the midline. We're going to meet in all fours. So before you get into all fours, let's all bring our towels or blankets have been folded into a square or rectangle more like it so that it covers the entire width of your yoga mat if you don't have a yoga mat it's fine it could be just on the floor it's just that we want to make sure that we have padding all right so now we can bring our knees onto the towel or the blanket and then we come into hands and knees so hands and knees means shoulders over wrists hips over knees the back of the neck is long and spacious so imagine one long line between the crown of the head and the tailbone all right so let me show you the proper shoulder position that's when we push down with the hands and the shoulders and the shoulder blades broaden what we do not want to have is collapsed shoulders so let's all push down with our shoulders and hands, fingers wide as starfish. So if we sustain this, you will see your shoulders will start to get tired in just a few moments. So let's just continue pressing down with those hands, the shoulders. We're going to start making some shoulder, wrist, hip circles in one direction with the breath. Noticing the range in your wrists, we just warm them up. So we're going to warm them up and stretch them even more. The idea here is to continue pressing down with your shoulders, really engage, feel your shoulder blades completely drawn away from each other. Back of the neck is long. Keep pushing down. You should start to feel a little bit of fire in your shoulders. Let's change directions. Circle in the other direction. Keep pushing down. Feeling also the warm up and the stretch in your wrists. That's it. You guys are doing great. Keep pressing down. 
We're building up slowly. Oh, we're coming back into neutral. Let's extend the left leg, but just keep the toes on the floor. So we're just gonna go for an ankle stretch, stretching the Achilles and the calf just for a moment, just cause it feels good. This is more of a stretching than a conditioning thing, but just keep pressing down with the shoulders, down and away. Activate the left knee quadricep muscle as you bring more weight onto your left foot. Feel the stretch. The calf takes a few breaths to finally get in. Keep pushing down with the shoulders. Don't collapse those, push, those shoulders. Feel the broadening of the shoulder blades. Breathe. All right, bringing our weight back onto our hands, shoulders over wrists. We're gonna start lifting the left leg. The leg is still very active. Flex that ankle, flex those toes. Look at the screen if you need to. The leg is parallel, the quadricep is completely activated. Once you have that, start lifting the right arm parallel to the floor, bicep to ear. And now lengthen the spine. Breathe. Keep pushing down with your left hand, left shoulder. You're all doing great. The left foot is still active. All five toes flexed and pointing downwards. Right arm. Don't let it drop. Keep lifting it. Keep activating that right shoulder. Back of the neck is long. Jaw is relaxed. All right, slowly we're gonna draw the left knee to right elbow. So look at the screen. If you don't know what I'm talking about, then bring the left knee to touch the right elbow and then extend back to parallel. We're gonna do this 10 times, so ready? Exhale, knee, elbow in, inhale, stretch it out. Continue on your own up. This is your practice. If it starts to get a little too intense, you can come out of it. Just continue doing this mindfully on the breath. If you need to stop, you stop. If you need to take a break, you take a break. You can activate the ujjayi breath to help you, contracting your throat slightly, still pushing down with that left shoulder, a few more to go. Make sure the back of the neck is still long and spacious. One more, you got this. And then slowly bring hand and knee back into hands and knees. So now you know where we're going. We're gonna extend the right leg. Let's stretch the right calf. Activate the right knee. Push down with those shoulders. Activate the right quad, right knee muscles. Pushing down with your hands and away to bring a little bit more weight on that left, sorry, on the right foot. Breathe. All right, coming back into neutral. So shoulders over wrist, start lifting the right leg. Make sure you're not opening the hip. Right toes to facing to the floor. Activate the leg as you're pushing the heel away to the back wall. And now start lifting the left arm, bicep to ear. Make sure you're still pushing down with your right shoulder, right arm. Lifting that right leg, feel the glute working. Feel the length, the expansion, arm to flexed foot. And we're gonna start doing the knee to elbow. You guys ready? We're gonna do 210, but you can come out of it before if you need to. And exhale, knee to elbow. Activate the core, inhale, stretch out. Exhale, knee to elbow and stretch out, keep pushing down with that standing shoulder, standing arm. Breath led. The breath leads, the body follows. 
back of the neck is long. The hips are square to the floor. You got this. You're all doing great. We're working the core. We're working the back muscles, the glutes. We're working the shoulders. Working the back muscles. Three more to go. You got this. Long inhales, complete exhales, and slowly come back to neutral. Well deserved child's pose. Bring your knees wider than your hips. Slowly bring your hips to your heels, forehead to floor or blanket, whatever is underneath you. And breathe, relax, let go of any effort. Deep inhales, complete exhales. Can you relax your jaw? Can you relax your tongue, your eyes? Breathe into your belly, sides, lower back. Breathe into the pelvic floor, space between your shoulders. Relax those shoulders. If you're anything like me, my shoulders got tired. So, just breathe into them, trying to catch up, making a note of the sensations that the body is feeding you. On the next inhale, we come back into hands and knees. We're going to go into downward facing dog with very bent knees. So if you've never done this before, this means you're probably going to make your stance, hands to feet shorter than you would normally. And then if so, fingers wide as starfish, you start lifting your hips up. And what we want to do is find that length from wrist, long line to shoulder shoulder blades and to hips. So wrist, shoulders, to hips. So look at the screen if you don't know what I'm talking about. My thighs are touching my belly. I just want to stretch. Find that long line, wrist, to shoulders, to hips. I'm gonna look into the screen. So Bruno, bend your knees a little more. Find a longer line. Adrian, you too. Can you find a longer line from wrist to hips? Alex, bend your knees a lot more. Marion is looking good. Max, everybody's looking good. Just find that length, wrist. So it's really not about the stretching the backs of your legs. It's about stretching your chest and your sh- your armpits. The ears are more or less at the same level as your biceps. The back of the neck is long. Now here, you can start walking the dog. That means bringing one heel down, straightening that leg any amount, and then bending that knee and bringing the other heel down while still maintaining the alignment of the upper body. Keep pushing down with those hands, with those shoulders are still active. Keep pedaling while still maintaining that long line. You got this. You need to come down, you come down, take a few breaths and you come back up. This is your practice, not a competition. Keep opening up those armpits. Whenever you're done, we're gonna come back down, child's pose. So yes, Downward facing dog is challenging and we come back to downward facing dog like 50 times in a tr- just a normal vinyasa class. So often we muscle through asana, keep breathing, maybe even bring your arms around towards the sides, allowing your shoulders just to drop towards the floor getting a gentle internal rotation of the shoulder joints. Breathe into those shoulders, breathe into that neck. 
downward facing dog when done with bent knees can also be quite a workout for the hamstrings. So breathe into your legs. Try to relax. There is only one yoga sutra that talks about asana. And that yoga sutra says, Stidam Sukham Asana. Asanam, that means yoga asana is about finding the balance between effort and ease. That is the only reference to asana in all of the yoga sutras. Keep breathing. We're going to go over round two, but this time, instead of doing downward facing dog, we're going to do dolphin. So dolphin slowly come back into all fours. We're going to bring our forearms onto the floor, shoulders over elbows, forearms straight, pointing straight in front of you. We're going to tuck the toes in. We're going to start lifting the hips up and once again, trying to find that length from elbows to armpits to hips. Knees are very bent. Finding that expansion, pushing down with those shoulders, shoulder blades. Back the neck is long, equal inhales. And now you can straighten your legs any amount as long as you don't lose the alignment. Alignment of elbows to armpits to hips. Keep pushing down with those shoulders. This is one of the best asanas, dolphin, to strengthen the shoulders. Five more cycles of breath here. Finding ease, can you modify anything to make it a little bit more available to you? If you need to come out of it, you come out of it, you come back to it. This is called a practice and every day our practice is different. Keep pushing down with those shoulders. You need to take a breather, you take a breather, you come back. Your body. You are your own teacher. You know how to carry out a practice that meets your needs. That's it. Slowly come back down child's pose just for a breath or two. <laughs> breathing into the side ribs, breathing into the back body. Slowly coming out of it before we get too cozy back into dolphin. Shoulders over elbows, elbows as wide as the shoulders. Start to lift the hips up. We're gonna do three legged dolphin. So once you have your dolphin, let's all start to lift and straighten the left leg. Don't lose the alignment. Elbows to armpits. The hips really point those left toes trying to lift the leg a little bit higher activating the back muscles the glute there's a lot going on here three more breaths here you got this slowly bring that leg down we're gonna lift the right leg up don't lose the alignment keep pushing down with those shoulders lift that right leg up Pointing the toes, activating the entire right leg. Feel that glute. Right glute should be burning. Keep breathing. Deep inhales. Equal exhales. Keep pushing down. Back of the neck is long. One more breath. And slowly come down. Wide leg of child's pose. Catching our breath. Breathe into your shoulders, breathe into your glutes, your back, whatever was tight or challenging in three-legged dolphin, just breathe into it. 
You're all doing great. One more breath. And we're gonna bring it up a notch. It's time slowly coming back into dolphin prep. And then we're gonna start lifting the hips up back into dolphin. And we're gonna be moving back and forth between dolphin and forearm plank. So still with bent knee, so look at the screen. And then on the exhale, coming back into dolphin. So back and forth, inhale forward, exhale dolphin. Inhale, forearm plank, exhale, dolphin. Five more times like that. If you need to come out of it, you come out of it, take a breather and then come back. Keep pushing down with those shoulders. Back of the neck is long, two more. Mindfully, slowly, with purpose. We're strengthening the shoulders like you can't imagine. Your chaturangas are going to get so strong. Slowly bring your knees down. Wild leg of child's pose. Great job, everybody. You're so going to feel this tomorrow. <laughs> Notice the prana, the heat that you've built, the strength. When we build this fire, this heat, we're also able to remove obstacles, that movement, that strength, that fire, blood circulation. As long as we do it safely and mindfully, it always plays into our advantage. Breathe into the side ribs. Breathe into the pelvic floor, into the kidneys, space between your shoulder blades. Surrender, acceptance, self-study. All right, slowly come out of it, don't worry. We are done with the shoulders for today. Let's get on our backs. Remove the towel from underneath you unless you want to have it because you have, you know, bony uh, sit bones or whatever. We're slowly going to bend our knees, plant the feet and slowly extend the arms forward and roll down a vertebra by vertebra if this is okay for your lower back. All right, let's keep our knees bent. We're gonna do different variations of Navasana, boat pose. That's another asana that people tend to just go through so quickly in class because they don't like it so much, but we need this. All right, so bring your legs together, the inseams of your thighs together, bent knees, feet together, slowly lift your legs, Knees are bent in 90 degrees, shins parallel to the floor, big toes to touch. Now we're going to bring our hands behind our back, elbows wide. We're going to press our lower back into the floor. So that normal, our normal arch that we have in the lumbar spine, let's flatten it out. We're activating the core already. We're going to start peeling off the head, the shoulders. The elbows are still wide, lifting the neck and maybe the shoulder blades any amount. We're going to breathe here. Five rounds of breath. Maybe feel some shaking. That's okay. Continue breathing long inhales and complete exhales. Three more breaths. Maybe lifting your shoulders a little bit higher, elbows wide, neck is supported and long. One more breath. And slowly bring everything down. Bring your feet on the floor, feet wider than your hips. Let go of the arms, T-shape the arms and windshield wide three times in each direction. Stretching the sides, the hips, the waist, a bit of the abdomen, 
gentle twist in the spine, internal, external rotation of the hips. Coming back to neutral, second round of modified boat pose Navasana. So this time we bring our arms alongside our body's palms facing down. Bring your feet sit together, your legs together. Start to lift the knees up, shins parallel to the floor. This time we're going to lift the arms towards the knees and just lift the shoulders. Again, the back of the neck is long and spacious. We're just going to hold it here for five cycles of breath. Self-study. What's going on? Can you make your inhales and exhales equally long? Continue lifting your shoulder blades off the ground. You need to come out of it. You come out of it. This is the first yoga conditioning class. Many chances to get stronger. Today we're just setting the baseline. One more breath. And slowly roll down, bring the feet down, windshield wiper. The balance between effort and ease. Never has windshield wiper felt so good, right? Well, there isn't two without three, so we're going to do a third variation of Navasana. This is we're all building up the strength so that we can do full Navasana. We're not there yet, at least not in this class. Coming back to neutral, we're bringing your legs together, bent knees, feet together, bringing our arms alongside our body. This time, we're going to start lifting the legs. The back of the knees are 90 degrees. We're going to flatten out that spine, that lower back of the spine, and we're just going to tap the toes to the floor on the exhale. Keep pushing down the lumbar spine onto the floor and inhale, lift the legs up. So the legs always stay in 90 degrees. So one more time on the exhale, tap the toes to the floor and lift up on the inhale. Continue like that. We're going to do that for about 30 seconds. Half of the work is keeping the spine glued to the floor. Can you relax your jaw? Can you relax the back of the neck? Can you move with the breath? Inhale, toes come down. Exhale, knees come up. 15 more seconds. Keep flattening that back. That does half of the core work. Five more seconds. It seems simple, but after a while, it starts burning. You got this. And release windshield wiper side to side. Relaxing the shoulders, relaxing everything, just letting go. Once you've got down the mechanics of the windshield wipers, you can just enjoy this. Continue breathing deeply and completely. Come back to stillness. Grab your knees with your hands. Pull the knees towards the shoulders, armpits negotiate the space, but belly to thigh. So maybe widening your thighs, your legs a little bit more. Use the biceps to pull the knees towards you. Relaxing the belly, relaxing the hip joints, the pelvic floor, the neck, the shoulders. Maybe lifting the corners of your lips towards your cheeks. And as we slowly wind down towards the end of the class, 
allow yourself to feel the effects, the shifts that have happened in your body. Let's rock side to side a few times, massaging the lower back, the muscles that, you know, the length of the spine. And next time you roll over onto a side, it doesn't matter what side, come into fetal position. Use your bottom arm as a pillow. And slowly use your upper arm to push yourself up. Let your head come up last. Coming back into that initial cross-legged position, upright position. Alright, let's all close our eyes for a moment. Notice what has happened in the last 45 minutes. Notice the shifts, the changes, your connection to yourself. That's what yoga is really about. Yoga helps us to find balance in life. Yoga helps us to go deeper inside, closer to our higher self. In yoga, we call it Atman. It's that spirit, that force, that life force that guides us, that inspires us, that keeps us on the right path. The more we listen to that higher self, the more resilient we become, life becomes less challenging, or at least we live life with a little more ease. Bring your hands together at heart center. Bow down your chin, relax the shoulders away from the ears. Thank yourself for your practice. Thank yourself for carving out the time. Thank your body for everything that it does for you. Start to lift the head up, open your eyes. Namaste. Thank you very much. Lift the head up. Have a beautiful, beautiful day. So uh, for those of you who are new to me, I teach stretching class on Mondays at 3 p.m. Eastern time. This is a new class, yoga conditioning on Wednesdays from today onwards. Today's was my first class. So thank you all for bringing your beautiful energies into this first class. And then every other Saturday, I teach a workshop. So this Saturday, I teach a workshop and the name is Welcome 2021 with Gentle Yoga. So it's a 90 minute celebration to welcome the new year, to start the new year, letting go of all the dust from 2020, the blockages, all that that doesn't serve. So it's a combination of stretching, of movement, a little bit of conditioning, and a very nice and long yoga nidra meditation, very healing. Med guided meditation at the end of the class. So if you are around this Saturday at 12 noontime Eastern, check it out. Come into my website to register for it, daviditohealing.com. I hope to see you all in the workshop or my future classes. You can also follow me on Instagram, Facebook, David Ito Healing, and join also my stretching and vinyasa groups in Facebook, where I put a lot of this content, videos, tips, etc.